All right, welcome to Stereopsych. Um, today we'll be doing the uh, one of the usual breakdowns. Haven't done one in a little while, but uh, it's a free time today. Um, yeah, welcome. I'm uh, Stephen Downey, a clinical psychologist from Australia. Um, I just do breakdowns of uh, essentially am I the asshole Reddit posts from uh, from the threads here and kind of give a psychologist approach of how would I think through this sort of an issue. We usually just pick the top one that isn't an update, which would be uh, this one here. <clears throat> so we shall get into it. I'll read it through and then sort of give some thoughts on it. Um, right. Am I the asshole for forcing my husband to clean up his mum's disgusting mess? Recently, we hosted a family gathering at our new house. Mother-in-law, 49 female, came with her husband. Ah, and the camera has immediately failed. You know what? We're just going to do, we normally do here and switch to, oh, yes, the very high quality camera. Fantastic. Laptop quality, here we come. So my mother-in-law, so we recently, we hosted a family gathering at a new house. Mother-in-law, 49 female, came with her husband, 50-something man, and her stepdaughter, 24 female. Mother-in-law forced something into her stepdaughter's mouth that she knew she hated and made her vomit all over my fucking floor. To be fair, mother-in-law did seem genuinely shocked because I don't think she meant to take it that far. And of course, her stepdaughter was embarrassed. I told my mother-in-law that I would not be cleaning that up. Mother-in-law ended up getting called into work, which of course pissed me off, but she's a doctor. So I go when she needs to go. So I get when she needs to go. She needs to go immediately. And yes, it was a real call. She wasn't touching the pager and it lit up. I'd never seen her so happy to get called into work though. I told her mother-in-law's husband to clean it up, but he said, I'm a guest and then went with, I was really an every other weekend kind of dad. I don't do vomit. At this point, I expected the 24-year-old woman to offer, but she didn't, and they left shortly afterwards. I told my husband that he needed to clean it, as it was his family, and I will not be responsible. He got upset as he can't stand vomit, and it makes him sick. To be fair, he isn't one of those guys who won't clean. He just can't deal with bodily fluids. I held firm and made him, and he's been cold ever since. Okay. Well, um... How would you approach something like this? So first off, this just isn't a major issue to me. So um, I think it's it's kind of hard to get involved. So let's think about this from the perspective of the woman involved. Uh, so she has her husband's family around. Um, Mum does something gross. It, it forcing something into her stepdaughter's mouth that she knew she hated. That's just odd to me. But anyway, and it made her vomit all over the floor. And then what? They just, they're just kind of walking around this vomit situation. And eventually dad just leaves. Um, okay. And she tells her husband to deal with it. So generally speaking, I think this is where you want to have rules in a relationship that work. Um, so one of the rules that I sort of usually push people to have a think about is um you know deal with your own side of the family effectively and that does extend to these sorts of things it's just sort of like you know your family came in here and did this thing uh, that actually becomes your issue to deal with so you know now when you have the knowledge of your significant other that they just can't deal with bodily fluids you've got to sort of think about is this the hill that i'm going to die on you know? And it's like, it, it could be that this is in fact the hill that she's willing to die on, but very often we've sort of got to think through the consequences as well. You know, you know what it's going to cost this person to do this and that it's going to be seen by that person that you are the one that forced it on them, even though really the situation that forced it on one of you and there isn't really a reason that it would necessarily fall to you simply what because you're a woman uh because you're the man like none of that really makes sense to me so um yeah i i guess this is one of those things of there needs to be some communication here um i think the real issue is mother-in-law basically just getting a call she's a doctor and needs to go immediately okay mum needs to hand this responsibility off to somebody. She simply doesn't. 
weird. 24-year-old woman vomits on somebody else's floor and doesn't clean it up. Also weird. Like, just this situation just stinks of weird, quite frankly. Um, would this situation happen? Um, I'm going to say this situation strikes me as potentially not real. I'm going to do the unusual thing of checking the comments just to see if they have responded. Uh, they don't like each other, so they assault each other and say it's just a prank. Uh, SD was an adult when these things happen, and she didn't... Stepdad was an adult, and she didn't know mother-in-law as a child. My husband wasn't abused. He had a great dad, and mother-in-law was just there to pay the bills. Um, okay. Stepdaughter previously put a live snake on mother-in-law. Okay. And there's, okay, right. So I think this does add some, I don't usually go to the comments as a general rule, but this does add some context. So um, within this family unit, there seems to be a, a decent amount of just generic domestic violence. So I'm looking at that and kind of going, okay, the sort of person who puts a live snake on somebody else, uh, slaps her mother-in-law in the face with cake and ends up cutting her lip. It's sort of like, these are not just pranks at this point. This is thinly veiled physical abuse, um, you know, and yeah, like, you know, blame and all that kind of stuff. I don't get about that. that that's normal stuff. Um, but I think, yeah, we're talking about sorts of people that do that. So um, Sangria Popsicle, when she opened her mouth, she shoved it in. Oh, okay. So she literally gagged her. Um, yeah. Wow. What a piece of work. I think these are things that you need to have a, a chat with your husband about whether or not you're actually wanting these people in your house. Uh, I think maybe that's a better conversation to be had. So normally I don't have as much trouble as I have with this, but the whole situation is so weird that I was sitting there going, this is possibly fake. It might not in fact be fake, but if it's not fake, then you've got to have a think about, you know, why would you invite both, you know? And so this is where I probably would take somewhat of a problem solving approach with this to kind of go, okay, so clearly mother-in-law and stepdaughter do not get on. We're not going to have both of them in the house at the same time. It's not a fun time. We'll have dad and one and dad and one, but we're not, we're not doing the situation where they're both here because it goes horribly pear shaped like this. And we end up doing the cleanup. You know, that's that's not it. Now, oh, who's to know that they're going to vomit and that kind of stuff? That's just not the point because, you know, you're all of 24, this this daughter, and it uh, looks like mother-in-law has been around for a fair while. This problem isn't solving itself, and all the suckers in this equation have another 20 to 30 years of this at a minimum to deal with, and that's before the problem with the mother-in-law potentially sorts itself out. Um so I think, yeah, it'd be a problem-solving approach to just sort of go, well, hang on, what do the boundaries look like? And there's probably a conversation to be had with your husband around if they come and do this crap, it's your job to fix. And so if you see a situation going south, you either intervene or you are on cleanup duty, whatever that looks like, of not intervening. You know, I think that, to me, seems like where this really needs to kind of go um, you know, but there's also probably going to be a conversation around, um, around this. It is not wrong for her to expect her husband to clean up the mess here. That is perfectly fine. I have no issue with it. However, I think you need to have some kind of a conversation that acknowledges that this was very difficult for this person and that you've done it for the principle of the matter, and you understand that that actually puts them in this position. Because I think 
I get this, I get the feeling that this has been a fairly high and mighty move, a justified high and mighty move, but a high and mighty move that's actually created distance between her and her husband, you know, uh, held firm and made him and he's been cold ever since. And so like, that's something that you want to fix and you kind of want to go, this needs to be part of the broader conversation around, I am not here to fix up your family's mess. And so you need to have the sort of boundaries where you're sorting this out in advance because if uh, if the buck stops, I guess the buck stops with you, not if. So if they make a mess and then they all piss off out of a situation, you need to know in advance you're the one dealing with it and then you can sort of do whatever you need to do, like such as come down on your sister to say, uh, you're 24, clean up your vomit, you know? Even if it's not your fault, at least it's your vomit, because otherwise I have to, and I don't want to, you know? Um, because, yeah, I want to see somebody like this 24-year-old say, oh, well, just your wife can do it, and then watch this bloke have to pick between his family and his wife, because he could still cave and just go, fine, I'll do it. But I think these are the things that she's sort of looking at and going, are you really throwing me under the bus on behalf of your family? And he's sort of going, oh, but I don't do the bodily fluid thing. And she's sort of like, well, it was your job to take that up with your family. Now you're making me take the consequence of you not holding boundaries. you know. And that's the conversation that sort of needs to happen in something like this to go, well, hang on, it's not okay that the consequences from your family fall to me, right? Um, and th those are the conversations I think that that need to be had around this. I certainly don't, I would hate for a situation like this to just sit in an enduring coldness because it's like, well, hang on. Now that family's problems has become your internal relationship problem, you know? And he's sitting there with, just for the record, some justified feelings around you're better than me at dealing with this kind of thing and you forced me to do it for the principle of the matter and I feel hurt by that because you have private knowledge of me that you know how hard this is for me and forced me to do it for the sake of the principle. And she's sitting there going, it's not actually about the sake of the principle. It's about the fact that this was your job to fix whilst they were still here and you let them leave thinking that I would just pick it up. And that's not fair either. And it's sort of like, yeah, because we inherited somebody else's problem. How are we going to make sure that we don't inherit other people's problems? Because we shouldn't even have this conflict. This conflict belongs to somebody else. And so like that's that's the conversation that I would I would want to see happening here and just problem solving around, you know, like why would you have stepdaughter and mother-in-law in the same room? That just seems like pointless trouble to me. Stop it. You know, that's a fixable problem. Don't do that thing again, you know. Um, you know, and make it clear to them. Either that or there's a conversation that happens that basically says no horseplay between you two or this stops, you know, to sort of go there is a boundary here of if you two bring your interpersonal crap into our home, we'll put up with it on that occasion and you will never be here again. So if you guys want to be here together, you have to act like adults. And put simply, I think that, uh, you know, I'm guessing that the people involved here are around the age of, you know, the uh, stepdaughter here, because I believe that's siblings of the brother. That's my guess here. But they're at least married. You're adults. You can have this conversation to just sort of say what you did there was not okay. I never want to see it again. No horseplay. Keep your problems out there. You know, don't bring them into my house because if you bring them into my house, that's it. I won't have it in my house anymore. You know, and then holding those boundaries over time. Anyway, we shall finish up there. Um, a little bit of an odd one. This is this is a bit of a standout for me in how odd this situation is. Um, yeah, there's just nothing about it that works at all. Um, and I think these guys need to uh, repair their relationship whilst they've got that immediate chance to do so, so that this sort of thing doesn't fester. And they both need to have a, an adult conversation that recognises we inherited this problem that was somebody else's problem and we don't want to let this get between us when this is a somebody else problem. This is not even really a problem between us specifically. I understand I did this. I understand you did this. Let's make sure this problem does not become our problem again. All right, we shall finish up there. Good to see everybody. If you like it, like it. If you want to see more like this, subscribe and I'll be picking them uh, through over time as I find time to do so.
All right. Have fun, y'all.